Hey guys, so a subscriber of mine asked me to take a look at a few videos that he wanted me to, I guess, recreate in Shaderforge or other shader editors. Uh, one of them was a uh, a hologram shader. And I thought, hey, that could be neat and try to recreate. So that's what I did. Here you have them. Now the shader in question did have uh, a few parameters with its opacity of the hologram, right? Um, like it would cut off by, by a light. And as you can see, when the light goes away from the object, it's not seen anymore, so it's not within the, the projection of the light. And I've sort of added my own parameters, like different lights can't see other shaders or other hologram shaders rather so like the green light doesn't affect the blue hologram and the blue light doesn't affect the green hologram I can show it, show it off in in the uh, when it's playing as you can see when they move around they don't affect each other it's only the inv individual holograms and we have a head just for <laughs> comparison So maybe I should show you how the shader works. I tried doing a tutorial, it was way too long-winded, so I had to scrap that. Now I started out by just making a uh, an opacity clip shader, right? Having it set by a opacity strength, a Fresnel, reverse the Fresnel, otherwise it will look well. The Fresnel would be the other way around. Yeah, no. Well, actually, it could look quite kind of nice, but in this case, we do want it to be the other way, like so. So it actually looks like it has volume of sorts, right? Like it's a bunch of lasers or particles. That's why we also want the the. Um, as you can see, there's like a noise channel, but it's not really noise. We could use a noise channel, but it doesn't look as nice as if we set the uh, di uh, the al alpha clip to be dithered into like four times or two times two, three or whatever. I set it to the maximum setting because that then you have a smoother gradient from solid to nothing. And the uh, the whole opacity clip logic is then affected by ambient occlusion, a scan line effect of sorts which is, I'll show you later, but I'll just show how it works. Like the, you can set its strength, look at the blue one, set the strength, you can set its uh, animation speed to scroll really fast or really slowly, set the scale of them to something incredibly large or something smaller and we have uh, ambient occlusion affecting it otherwise you'll start seeing the insides of the uh, of the model as you can see you could see the ears inside the ears yeah doesn't look like doesn't look all that nice when it does that so that's why I have uh, an ambient occlusion set up so it actually since we've baked ambient occlusion into it, it removes the insides of the model from the view. And that fixes that problem. Uh, it's masked by also a, uh, the light color. So when the color is set to red, only red lights actually affect the, um, the, the hologram. So yeah. The scan line is basically just a world position node set to, well, pan in uh, Y axis, and then we multiply that so it actually scales or actually tiles up, and then we hook it up to a sine wave, and a lerp set to 1 in A and sine wave up to B, so it actually, if we multiply it, it'll start moving the 
So we use that again to affect this shader. If we set to multiply this, then becomes this value becomes zero if we set it off. So zero times whatever is zero. So <laughs> well, we don't want it to do that. We want it to set to like when we turn it off, it's one. When we turn it on, it starts appearing, and these zero values and ones should then affect here, right? Otherwise, it'll start removing it. We also use light attenuation. I first tried to do it within the opacity clip, but that doesn't really make any sense since light light attenuation takes the uh, the object's right to depth buffer into account. Why was that set to right to depth? Whatever. All right. So if if the object is set to right into depth, the light attenuation sees it, but if we set it to... if we set the light attenu attenuation into a passive clip, then it has the potential to not see it, so it starts to conflict and whatever, so... then it outputs it as pink because it's an error. It can't see something which it's not supposed to see, and so it just turns pink, right? So we set it to affect the color, the coloring of the object, and then we set the color of the blend mode into additive. So when a value is zero, it then is not seen. So I can I can show how that looks. Set it to alpha clip and hit compile. It doesn't really look any different, does it? Well, it'll start looking different once we start removing it. Right? Whoops. Alright. Uh, what did I have to do to affect it? There we go. No, not that. If we move the light, <laughs> that's the thing. Right. Could you tell this is unscripted? Well, you could probably tell now. So as you can see, the light is gone, so it shouldn't be seen, right? Well, that's the thing. We haven't actually set any special parameters to the shader, so when it's not seen, the game still sees it, and your depth, your camera depth, still sees it, so it thinks, aha, there's no shadows behind it. Even though it should be gone, but it plays awkwardly with shadows, so let's just set it back to transparency. So now it's not seen by depth, and when it's gone, it's gone. And it's set to additive, otherwise I think it'll start to look quite strange, right? Hold on. Set it to pig. Hit compile. Yeah, there we go. It's back. Right. Or, oh, right. Transparency and opaque. That doesn't really. Well, I. Ah, never mind. <laughs> I don't think it matters. Well, that's the ad adding, but. Set it to transparency, set it to additive, and um, yeah. That's about it about the blending. Ambient occlusion, really simple. Ambient occlusion added by A. This is like doing the lerp again, but the opposite way. So when it's set to 1, this is. Add, it adds 0, so this is the only thing that's shown. When it's 0, it adds 1. Since this is a strength of this, so yeah, clamp it off by zero to one. It's not really all that difficult, it's just figuring out the logic behind it. That's the shaders in a nutshell, I suppose. Just remember to use the light coloring. Color, the light color works with hair, but not the light attenuation, so keep that in mind. If you have any questions about the shader, feel free to ask. 
I've uh, also made the shader in uh, Amplify. It's exactly the same. There's no difference between them. It was the same workflow in, in working. You just directly port them. You can actually see how it looks in, in Amplify. Hold on. It looks like this. It's exactly the same. Oh my goodness. Who could have known? Yeah. Super simple. I'll share the shaders on uh, the Shader Forge forums so you can download them and play around with them yourself. I have not bothered doing anything with um, vertex displacement. That's a video for another day, I suppose. If anyone wants me to do that, take a look at it. Um, just ask. I can. I can do that. I just noticed that I had not. Set this back to 28. Let's show it off. Yeah. Yup, yup, yup. It looks it looks alright. It it works, right? That's the point of it. Uh oh yeah, right. I need to mention you have to set these anything you want to be in uh, with this shader, you ha also have to set to a different layer, like transparent effects or something, and then if you have directional lights in your scene, set their culling mask to untick the transparent effects, otherwise these lights don't matter. Now it's still seen, no matter what happens. Yeah. So we got a culling mask, whoa. Now it's no longer seen by it, so keep that in mind to uh, set them to whatever layer they said that should want it to be set in. Yeah, that's really about it. Any questions, like I said, post them in the comment se section or on the ShaderForge forums. I'll post a link in there, I'll upload the shader and um, the node node tree and all that so yep have a good day bye bye